Sunburnt already? Oh no! Quite the opposite. Teachable moment. What happens when an orchid gets too cold? Can we do anything about it? Is the orchid doomed? Stick around and listen. I hope this video will answer all those questions for you. Besides, what can we do if the orchid isn't doomed? All of that I will cover in this video. Even if you do not have circumstances that threaten cold exposure to your orchids but have clicked on the video anyway, let me thank you for supporting the channel with a view. I appreciate that. Besides, from where I'm stood, let me say how lucky you are that you are in the fortunate position to not have to worry about your orchids struggling because of cold temperature threats. Needless to say, I'm envious. <laughs> but thank you for being here. And I'm going to be so bold as to ask you to please also give this video a like, maybe share it with someone you know who could benefit from the information and the experience that I'm sharing with what happens in my collection during adverse conditions, be they too hot, too cold or lack of humidity. As we are coming out of winter, we are dealing with the damage that cold temperatures do to orchids, what to look for, and well, apart from upping the temperatures using heaters, is there anything else that can be done if the budget does not allow for heating your grow environment? Consider subscribing to the channel as well if you have not yet subscribed, because here at Ninja Orchids, the downside of my circumstances turn into a teachable moment and without having any control over my environment, things happen very quickly or slowly, but they do happen, unfortunately, and losing orchids is something that is becoming inevitable. Stick around, because even I do not know what I'm going to deal with next. So subscribe and join the adventure into the unknown. <laughs> Thank you. Anywho, I have three candidates today as examples. But the most obvious one is the Sonia Green Mailman, and we will get to the other two briefly, seeing as the Sonia Green Mailman pretty much shows us all we need to know. However, let me say right out of the gate that, in a wet-dry cycle, orchids are more tolerant to temperatures below their comfort level, while mine grow in semi-hydro using lava rock in most cases, but the majority of my cattleyas are in lecker and self-watering, and that is where the danger comes in. You see, while ambient temperatures may be too low for the orchid already, lacquer will compound the cold temperatures in the pot and lower it even more because of evaporative cooling. The reason a wet-dry cycle will help the orchid through conditions that it does not take kindly to is because the roots can be kept dry while the low, low temperatures persist. Whereas in lacquer and self-watering, the roots are always damp. While not wet during low conditions because I keep my reservoir empty, the pot doesn't ever dry out completely so that I do not lose the wicking efficacy of the lacquer for when the conditions are ideal again. So, wet roots, cold temperatures, and this is what can happen if heating the space or even heat mats are not an option. You see, during cold temperatures, while using a heater may not be an option and we could choose between heating the space or alternatively using heat mats, heat mats will keep the temperature of the root system nice and comfortable, which will in turn not cause negative effects on the leaves for the most part. However, there is no guarantee that heat mats will stop cell collapse in the leaves if the ambient air is too cold, but they will definitely avoid the double jeopardy by eliminating cold and wet roots. So here we are. My Sunya Green Mailman has not taken too kindly to the conditions in February and through parts of March. I did not see these symptoms until recently. I assumed we had gotten through the worst of it, gotten away with it this winter again, Earlier in the winter, though, I had noticed my other Sunya Green's leaves starting to curl, which is a very clear sign of cold stress, but there was no burgundy coloring. However, it was the signal that something is not right and other symptoms are around the corner. But with my regular Sunya Green, I believe we have managed to keep this orchid safe. She has come through the winter, even though she's got some curly-whirly leaves. And being that my mailman is also a Sunya Green, I thought that would be the end of that, and we dodged a bullet there again. <laughs> However, the other day my mailman told me otherwise, because all the most recent growths had a purple pattern across the top of the front of the leaf, which looked like anthocyanin, but within 24 hours, those started turning brown and then black, and the first leaf dropped off on day three. 
This is not to be confused with black rot. If it were black rot, the tissue would be soppy, weeping, soft, squishy, and have a bit of an unpleasant smell. The leaf would not have detached itself cleanly from the pseudobulb. Instead, I would have had to intervene, cut, etc. to get the rotting, decaying tissue off. So, your first signs of cold damage because of cold wet roots as well as cold ambient air is, in this instance, a dark green appearance that looks like a wet patch, but it is firm because the cuticle is holding the liquid in. It is not soft to the touch, but this is a classic example of cells collapsing and now we can see it. Usually you will see the symptoms of this wet patch on the underside of the leaves because of gravity. As the cells collapse, the liquid within them accumulates at the point of the leaf that is easy to flow to and then stops because other cells have not collapsed, thus creating a barrier for the liquid. On the opposite side of the leaf at the top, your symptoms at the surface will appear purple or dark brown. They have this weird apparition that appear, which indicate that the temperatures were too cold. You may think that the orchid had too much light, if what you see happening looks like anthocyanin. But if an orchid has never shown signs of anthocyanin while it has been in your collection, you will see the burgundy blemishes and know that the temperatures were too low. Sometimes these blemishes can have a dark brown look about them, but usually when we see dark brown somethings appear on our leaves, we are already alerted to something isn't right and intervene. Whereas, when we see something that looks like anthocyanin, we may just walk away thinking the orchid is getting enough light, and this is something to be mindful of. If your temperatures were too low for an extended period of time, this has nothing to do with too much light. Check the underside of the leaves and see if you find there are some patches that look a little bit wet, even though they're not because the cuticle is holding everything together. And if you're in doubt, here's another little pointer. The transition from the burgundy blotches changes very quickly to brown and then black as the cells die off. Then it is a question of how long will the leaves remain on the orchid now that the structure is compromised and you will usually see major symptoms like this on the newest growths working their way back toward the oldest growth even if a new growth is mature and hardened off the cells will always be fresher and more tender for that reason those structures will be the first to be affected. As mentioned, my leaf dropped within three days, leaving the newest growth from 2022 with only the pseudobulb. Eventually, the second newest growth will also lose its leaf, but it seems to be taking a little bit longer. Either way, despite the orchid not being a goner, this orchid is now set back exponentially. Another symptom of cold damage is what you see on my Lelia pacavia the whitening of the leaves and, to a degree, other structures. Eventually, the white will turn brown as the affected tissue dies. Often, this dead tissue simply dries and the damage is limited to the unsightly patches that are left. However, this kind of cold damage does not take out the leaves as fast as my previous example with the Sunya green. My Pacavia so far has yet to move to the browning of the affected tissue. Nitrogen deficiency can also have a similar look to the leaves. White patches will appear, but if you know what your temperatures were doing at the time leading up to seeing white patches, then you can conclude that it was cold damage in the case of a period of lower temperatures. With my Pacavia, I believe I have the cold temperature symptoms as well as a little nitrogen deficiency going on at the same time. So you can see the difference cold temperature, the white has a distinct margin about it, whereas nitrogen deficiency looks like the white is in blotches where you might also say that's magnesium deficiency, but if it were magnesium deficiency, we wouldn't be seeing any white. The reason I'm drawing the conclusion is because while I mentioned that cold damage will normally appear on the newest growths, you can see the damage on my Pacavia is on the oldest growths stick with me. <laughs> that means that the newest growths were drawing nitrogen from the back structures during the past two winters when the orchid was an active growth and I could not fertilize as much as I would normally do. So the patches on the leaves that you see here, that is nitrogen deficiency. But the white that you see on the seedling leaves right at the back, that is cold damage which happened in the winter of 21 and 22. You see, it's been that long ago and the leaves have as yet to show signs of browning. I have managed to correct the patchiness of the leaf with a nitrogen deficiency only to a degree, 
because the active growth throughout the winter makes it difficult for me to fertilize this orchid appropriately. Now, during the warmer months of the year, I will try to play catch up, but not trying to compound a problem by risking salt buildup in the pot. So I'm hoping you can see the difference as to why in my Pacavia the seedling structures were affected with cold damage producing white patches as opposed to my mailman. The newest growths were affected first because of the low temperatures. Both structures are tender growths and my mailman does not have any seedling bulbs at the end that could have been affected. So what happened was the newest growths were affected first, while my Pacavia had little seedling structures at the end that were more tender and they were affected first. I hope that makes sense. If not, let me know in the comments. While I have seen my Pacavia with the white patches for more than a year now, the mailman is a shocker and it's a little bit of a punch in the gut, to be honest. Now, I do want to briefly touch on what the treatment of orchids is after cold stress because not all is lost. But first of all, I hope that me showing the two different examples and explaining why one orchid was hit on the new growth and the other on the oldest growth, I hope that was clear. Moving forward, we are in this situation. It cannot be changed. Now what? Is there anything that can be done if you have an orchid that was subjected to cold temperatures or is it estray? Will the orchid even have a chance? Will the orchid not recover at all? Well, here are my tips and I hope that they will be of help to you. And let's see the progress or lack thereof with my orchids as we move forward. If you have your conditions dialed in again, maybe there was a mishap in your grow space or greenhouse, then here's what you can do to help your orchid on its road to recovery. Know that in some cases it is a slow and painstaking process. Some hybrids can be vigorous and bounce back quickly, while others may not, but not all hope is lost. I would highly recommend to leave your orchid alone. Do not repot. No matter the setup, including mounted orchids, even those, leave them alone. The damage is done, the orchid is really stressed out now, and the best plan of action moving forward is to leave the orchid alone and not add more stressors. Chances are the roots are shot in the pot, they're dead because of the cold and wet, but repotting and cutting away roots and placing the orchid into an ICU setup is not the way to go. Until the orchid shows signs of new roots. That may take a while because sometimes an orchid does not grow new roots at the same time that it is growing a new growth. So no matter what, do not repot until you see the signs of new roots. Know that your orchid is now set back. And being set back, it may actually not produce a new growth according to the growth habit of the orchid that you have become accustomed to. That is a side effect of setback. Still, do not repot. What you can do though is keep a very close eye on your orchid during this post-stress time period because it is now weakened and susceptible to pest attack. Any such pest attack will weaken the orchid further and that is not what we want to have happen at all. Stay on top of the pest prevention treatments as well as the treatments for fungus. So that is super important. We have to put a bubble of protection around orchids like this now and for the foreseeable future. Also, while the orchid may be able to handle the brightest of light, direct sun, etc., whatever your culture was before the situation, change that and reduce the exposure to those conditions by 50%. Keep flushing the pot as and when you do your other flushes, no matter the setup. Keep the humidity higher so that any remaining structures do not lose too much water through transpiration, seeing as we are dealing with a compromised root system that results in disrupted water absorption. Reduce the fertilizer levels to at least half, just in case there are still some viable roots that can function. And with that, supplement with calcium and magnesium and seaweed also at reduced concentration. The idea being that we are supporting the orchid with nutrients while not risking any salt buildup in case there are a couple of roots still functioning, we do not want to take them out. If you're growing in a wet dry cycle, allow the pot to dry out as per usual. You will notice if the pot stays wet for longer than you are accustomed to because that will be your indicator of the state of the roots in the pot. You don't 
need to unpot the orchid to know whether your roots are dead or alive. Watch how long that pot takes to dry out. If it takes longer, the roots are shot, but let that pot go dry if you're growing in a wet dry cycle. Your pot staying wet longer is the confirmation that the roots are not functioning properly. That's all you need to know. But just continue with the wet dry cycle and reduce everything about the orchid's culture until you see a new growth coming. Then wait for new roots. No matter what, whether the back bulbs shrivel, whether you lose more leaves, wait for new roots before you intervene. That new growth is the only thing that can protect the orchid from total decline in the future because no matter the size of the new growth, the new roots will be able to support the orchid and it's not going to die. But we need to make sure that we wait for new roots. I cannot emphasize that enough because a lot of people, including myself in the past, oh my goodness, I made a mistake. I'm going into the pot, chop, chop, chop all the roots off. She needs to go into ICU. And from that moment on, more often than not, it's history for the orchid because it's stress upon stress upon stress. It's too much. So just leave her alone. Baby her. Give her circumstances that are 50% less than what she would normally do with this orchid if she had not been exposed to all the cold and being set back. So with all that being said, what about my examples? Now, I am anticipating new growth on my mailman but I'm not expecting it to grow to the size of the other growth. This is part and parcel of setback. What I can see in my pot is that the front lead, the roots are still functioning. The back lead, the roots are shot. So what I've just mentioned is exactly what I'm going to do with my mailman. Calcium, magnesium, seaweed, fertilizer, everything at a lesser concentration, but I'm not gonna starve her because I do see viable roots still, and I'm gonna make those work for the orchid. The low light levels that I'm going to be giving this orchid while she recovers and hopefully grows that new growth without any issues because I'm going to be vigilant about pest protection. What leaves I have left or am going to have left with my mailman, that'll also reduce the entire photosynthesis process. So all of that will compound itself in a smaller growth, but we will get a new root system and that is important. And that's what I'm working towards. I don't care if that new growth is going to be half the size. It's what I am expecting. What about my Pacavia? Well, while it looks a little rough, and many of my orchids do when they come out of the winter season, so I'm not surprised, it has a viable root system and will either bloom or not. Just because it has two sheaths doesn't mean it is guaranteed to bloom because it did not have the light levels that I would have liked to have provided. For that reason, I'm not confident that we're gonna see any blooms. However, if it does, bonus <laughs> remember to subscribe and find out if or when it happens <laughs> and then my regular sunya green look she's growing a new growth already yes she's had some cold damage her leaves are curly but she's on schedule she's growing her new growth she has viable roots in the pot some dead roots in the pot that's to be expected she is getting the full-on treatment because we are growing into warm temperatures, so I'm not doing any changes with her. It's unfortunate. I have another orchid with cold damage symptoms, so hey-ho, what else is new? <laughs> But yeah, I hope that this video was helpful. Some positive has to come out of what happens to my collection, so I really hope that this is the case with this video, or else it would make me feel even worse. If all this decline in my collection is for naught. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you for being here, for taking the time. I wish you a fabulous day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. And while I was in the process of taking my orchid back to an area that isn't blasting her with such bright light, leaf number two popped off. You see, no rot. It's not squishy. It's not soft. It's not oozing. And it just popped off cleanly. There is no rot. Quel dommage. So if you're still here, let me show you. Leaf number one. Check this out. Leaf number one. The growth from 2022. Next growth down, leaf number two. That is the growth from 2021. Now, I have one more growth left that is seriously damaged. That's this one, the growth from 2020. And then in the back here, huh, we'll see if this leaf is going to hold on or not. Look at my Sunya green. 
Oh my goodness, I wasn't going to moan about this, but when that leaf popped off, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to show it. That's how quick it goes. And it didn't even look like it was compromised. And it just went poof, comme ça. Thank you for watching. Bye.